Coach Gwazdecki is here to uh, give us an update about Jesse and uh, preview this weekend's series against the uh, in-state rival Colorado College. So here's Coach. George. Thank you, Eric. Um, currently, Jesse uh, continues to be going uh, undergoing tests. Uh, the latest information was his neuro team um, has been um, uh, about right now. They'll be looking at the latest set of, uh, of MRIs uh, to determine um, the next step, whether that be further tests, whether that be surgery. Um, I spoke with uh, our assistant director of sports, uh, of sports medicine, who's been with Jesse uh, ever since his injury on Saturday night, and he's been keeping me up to date. Uh, there's, other than what I just told you, there has not been a lot of, uh, there's no, no other new news. Uh, parents, uh, Terry and Jackie, uh, Jesse's parents, are, are doing well considering the situation. Um, the outpouring of, of support, thoughts, and prayers has been, um, I don't want to say overwhelming, but has been incredible. And uh, from all over the United States and Canada, uh, I've been receiving it, trying to pass that information on to our team. Uh, Terry and, and Jackie Martin have been receiving that as well. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's certainly been uplifting for, for Jesse and, and for his teammates. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of standing by, kind of on the hour to, to determine or to hear about uh, any, any of the latest news. The good news is nothing really has changed as far as Jesse is concerned regarding his, uh, his status. Uh, he has, on Saturday night, we visited with him in the uh, emergency room of the Grand Forks Hospital prior to him being airlifted uh, to the Hennepin County Medical Center. Uh, we visited him for about an hour and a half. He was in a good frame of mind. He was able to move his fingers, toes, hands, feet. Uh, he had sensations throughout his body, and that hasn't changed. So uh, that's very good news. Um, as I said before, surgery has not been performed yet. Uh, there's, no, there's no set time yet for surgery. So they're still looking at all the different uh, uh, issues involving with his with his progress and his status. Um, our team certainly was uh, affected by it. Uh, I, I will say that it was the most unusual post-game reaction that I've ever experienced. Normally when you, when you win a game against a uh, traditional rival, you feel good and there's some amount of celebration uh, happiness, etc., etc., and, and uh, that post game was uh, as if we had lost a, a game, and uh, understandably so. Uh, I commend our captains and our team on on uh, being resolute and, and being able to get their focus back uh, on the game uh, at the time of the injury. Uh, maybe good or bad, that we really didn't understand the severity of the injury to Jesse as he was being stretchered off. We obviously, our concern was for him, but we really didn't understand, um, nor did anybody at the time, the severity of the injury. Um, uh, you know, practice yesterday was, um, I would say, good. Um, I think... Uh, Certainly, uh, Jesse and his, his situation is, and his condition is on the for, in the forefront of, of all of our minds, but it's time now where we have to get back to moving forward um, uh, to complete our mission. And um, uh, I think Jesse is an inspiration for us, and we want to be an inspiration and, and give hope to Jesse. And the best way we can do that is by getting ourselves ready to, to perform at our best, uh, physically and, and mentally and emotionally uh, for this Friday night's game against Colorado College. Um, so, uh, you know, that's where we sit right now. I, I think that there has been, uh, I have heard from some people, especially I've, I've heard emails regarding the actual hit itself. I think all of us, all of us know about the, the telephone call that uh, Jesse Martin made to Brad Malone. 
um, expressing no ill will, expressing and kind of uh, <coughs> letting him say, hey, it was a, you know, don't feel bad about the hit. In Jesse's mind, it was a good hit. Um, uh, and I, you know, I, it tells you the kind of young man that uh, Jesse Martin is. Um, uh, you know, I, I, my hat is off to Jesse for, for that thing alone, and, and it certainly was a, a heck of a gesture. Um, the, the collision or the hit was not a legal hit um, because of the, um, the contact to the head, uh, which is a major rule emphasis in the NCAA rule book this year. And um, uh, unfortunately, the referees did not see it <coughs> at the time. Uh, obviously, when the play was stopped because Jesse was lying on the ice, uh, the referees conferred with the linesman. One of the linesmen did see it and supposedly indicated, yes, there was contact to the head, and that uh, uh, as a result, the penalty was called, and uh, it was the right call. Um, the penalty was not called because Jesse Martin was lying on the ice. And I think that's important to note. Um, it was a penalty based upon the rule book and the emphasis. Those of you who have know the rule book and have seen the rules of emphasis from the NCAA this year, that's exactly what, uh, what they're trying to avoid, and that's exactly what they're going to penalize for if, if a player does not avoid it. So, um, uh, that's what I'd like to say about that. Um, we are moving on to uh, uh, this week's preparation. We've got Adam Murray uh, started skating yesterday and, and is starting to feel better. Um, Dusty Jackson is, has been given the clearance and looks like he'll be able to start skating lightly today. Paul Phillips will, will also be given the green light to start skating lightly today. So, uh, uh, you know, we'll be able to get some of the, uh, our injured players back on the ice at least skating and practicing. Whether they're available for us, uh, whether Paul Phillips and Adam Murray are available to us uh, this weekend is, is still yet to be determined. Uh, Dusty Jackson is still a ways away. Coach, uh, obviously injuries are part of the game, but in your career, have you ever dealt with anything uh, remotely similar to this, where uh, you know one of your players, their their future health is, is in question, and uh, if so, you know, is, is there anything from my experience that you're maybe drawing on as you deal with the team this week? You know, unfortunately, yeah, I have. I've dealt with a a, a neck injury similar to this. Uh, my first year here at DU, in practice, uh, there was a collision between John McLean and Brent Carey. You know, a big guy and a little guy, and the little guy took the worst of it. Uh, Brent Carey, because of the mid-ice collision in practice, um, suffered a broken neck, and he was out for quite some time. He did come back to play, but um, um, you know, we were just glad that he was able to come back, and, and he was the one that made the decision that he wanted to play. But uh, it, it's certainly, you know, it, it's certainly a rare. Fortunately, a rare occurrence when something like this happens, but it, uh, um, you know, uh, I think that uh, um, you never, obviously, never like to see something like this happen. Coach, how difficult a situation is it for you as a coach? Because on one hand, you've got to show compassion for the injured player, which is a no-brainer. So do your players, but yet you got to go back to work as well. Is there a tough line to walk between worrying about that guy and getting ready for, for the weekend? It is really tough, uh, and, and, and I don't mean to come across, I don't mean to, I'm kind of glad we didn't know the full part of the injury. Uh, you know, there was information, very slight pieces, bits of information that there was an issue with maybe a slight concussion uh, at the time, Jesse's, uh, the, sh the shoulder area, uh, the clavicle area was hurting him. Uh, and uh, so there was some concerns that maybe he'd broken a clavicle or the AC joint or something like that. But, uh, um, uh, you know, I think the people who were there did a tremendous job of stabilizing him uh, against any type of issue that might occur, took their time um, uh, in not only stabilizing him but getting him on the, on the board and onto the stretcher. Um, but again, we didn't. We were probably more, we were ignorant to what was happening. 
what the real issue was. And um, certainly the team was affected, but in some ways probably uh, the real issue was deflected well enough that we could refocus and, and get our minds back in the game and, and what we had to do. Um, and I'm proud to say that the team did a terrific job in, in doing that because that was, that was one difficult situation. How does that affect this week, though? Because now you know the situation and you still got to balance the two of playing a game. And well, you know, we, we've, we have a lot of support within our, uh, within our university and within the athletic department. Um, we met, we had a, 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 we've been meeting with the team ever since the uh, incident occurred on Saturday night, but yesterday we had a big meeting where we had a lot of our support people here at the university uh, involved in the meeting itself. And, and uh, you know, incidents like this affect people different ways. Um, uh, you know, some of them internalize it and deal with it better than others. Uh, some of them are, 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 are very worried about Jesse, and I think, I'm sure that there's uh, concerns over individuals, hey, you know, that could have been me. And um, so for all those uh, situations, we have people here who, who are experts at dealing with those types of, of issues and, and the mental and emotional parts of, uh, of, uh, of dealing with life. And, and trauma that occurs, whether it's physical or mental or emotional. So uh, we went through that yesterday. Um, afterwards, we had a, a good practice. It was a uh, spirited. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a real challenging practice, but it was a good practice where it was. I think the guys were glad to be able to get back on the ice and, and at least spend 45 or 50 minutes um, <clears throat> doing something they enjoy and being able to kind of put the whole. Uh, situation at least to rest for uh, a little bit of time. Coach, along the, you know, the lines of trying to move forward, uh, what adjustments do you guys have to make to replace Jesse on the ice? Obviously a key guy on, on what's been your top line so far. Uh, you know, we, we've been adjusting ever almost since day one, it seems like, just because of, uh, you know, uh, we've had a number of guys go down and, and have been, they've been on the lineup. Uh, you know, uh, one of our top centers, Nick Shore, has been out since uh, the first game of the season. Um, and we've been adjusting on the fly before games, during games. Um, uh, you know, I don't know, Anthony Maiani has played center over the last number of games. Um, probably will continue to be there for a while. Uh, we're looking at uh, uh, perhaps Kyle Ostro, who has played at center back in his junior playing days. He's never played center here. But has played center, and has experience at it, and obviously as a senior, it, you know, uh, understands the, the responsibilities of that position. So uh, those are probably the uh, the areas that uh, we will we will look at. But uh, we certainly need to be able to at least start a game with four complete lines and guys who understand the playing positions and responsibilities of each. Okay, Steve. Um, one, if uh, he requires surgery, will he be flying to be with Jesse during that process? Or are you going to stay here? No, I am. Uh, uh, I'm flying out tomorrow. Okay. I'll be visiting him uh, tomorrow. Uh, uh, he and his parents tomorrow. I, I, I just. Um, I think everybody. You know, at Saturday night, Sunday morning, wanted to be with Jesse, and as you know, and, and uh, that's the initial feeling. But um, you know, we were able to kind of coordinate that Jesse has support from his DU family. Uh, pretty much daily. Uh, as I mentioned, Aaron Liu, our assistant director of sports medicine, has been there since since the start of the injury. Uh, Steve Miller, uh, assistant coach Steve Miller, was there all day yesterday with him, and I will be there tomorrow with him, and and uh, we'll kind of make uh, further further decisions on that. Uh, you know, uh, when we know more about his uh, what the, the direction they're going to take with his with his treatments and his surgery if it's necessary. But uh, uh, yeah, I think everybody initially wanted to be there and that was the only concern we had. So, but uh, um, we also understand that we have other obligations here. We've got uh, 26 other young guys who need their, our attention and, and uh, we've got, uh, as I used this term before, we've got to complete our mission. One of our brothers, our comrades is missing. Um, we feel awful about that, and he's in the forefront of our thoughts and our minds. 
and our prayers and thoughts are with him. However, we got to complete our mission. And I know Jesse wants it that way, and our guys understand that, and um, that's our theme, and that's what we're going forward with. Okay. Additional questions? Yeah, just uh, how were uh, Jesse's spirits when you saw him after the game, and how are they now? Do you, what is your knowledge of how he's feeling? Uh, you know, um, when you're walking into the ER, and I'm sure that when I walk into the hospital tomorrow, you know, you'll be, I'll be a little bit uh, uh, wondering that same question. Uh, when I got to the ER and actually started talking to Jesse, he was in, uh, in a good frame of mind. You know, I, I think he a little apprehensive, um, scared, but glad that we were there. And after about five or ten minutes of, of talk, the first thing he wanted to know was, you know, how'd the game go? What happened? Tell me about the game. And uh, so as we started talking, he started loosening up and started feeling a little more relaxed. John Cook, uh, one of his best friends on the team, was came with us. And uh, uh, so we had a few chuckles. And as I said, we were there for about an hour and a half. And he was in a good frame of mind when he left. I, I think that he sensed that he was in, he was, uh, uh, a, a lot of people spent a lot of time with him that night in, in Grand Forks. Not only DU people, but uh, North Dakota people and the people at the hospital, people at the arenas, and they, they, they did a tremendous job. Um, so I, I think he, he knows that he's getting great treatment, great support. I know that it's a little frustrating, I think, for him at times because uh, it's painful. Um, and, you know, they're, you know, they're trying to, I'm sure, trying to balance the medication know, and, and that they want to keep him lucid so that they can, he can give proper responses to the testing and the research that they're doing on him to be able to determine what's best for him. But uh, um, I think the good thing is this idea of emergency <coughs> surgery um, never came about. Um, it never was planned. But uh, um, you know, I think that's a positive uh, because he is... They feel good enough that he, he, they can stabilize him and continue to test before they make their final decision. Hold on, Coach. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Coach Bozdecki. Uh, fans and media are encouraged to visit denverpioneers.com for the latest updates on Jesse and uh, his progress in Minnesota. And if anyone has any questions, they can be directed to me or Mike Kennedy or Nicole Loops in the media relations office. So. Send our wishes out to Jesse Martin. Uh, you know, we root for the hockey team. Our players root for the hockey team. We're one uh, school and one university here, and the basketball program really feels that way about the hockey team. So uh, we hope he gets better, uh, and we wish we wish him and his family are th they're in our thoughts. So uh, it's part of sports. Uh, it happens uh, in every sport. Uh, it happens in basketball. It happens in football, uh, and, and it's why sports are uh, a microcosm of life. I mean, it's it's unfortunate, uh, but now's the time for you know their their team to come together and, uh, and, and support each other. And, and if they do, you know, I know Georgia's team is strong, and uh, you know something good is going to come from it. And all good groups have something good come uh, from adversity like that. So, you know, obviously hearing uh, Coach Scott, and Coach Guazeki speak, you know. It is obvious that life is a lot bigger than just basketball and just hockey, and so uh, obviously our team uh, was you know pretty shook up about Jesse. We have a, a player actually in a similar situation who collapsed on campus, Shawnee's Powell, um, and you know as as you heard George talking about you know spending you know having your staff spending time uh, you know nights days um, you know Katie, one of my staff is sitting right here, spent a night you know in the hospital with Shawnee's. Uh, she collapsed on campus, was, was uh, rushed to the ER. She still was having, uh, didn't really have full use of her left leg for a long time. And some scary stuff. I mean, when you're talking about, hey, you know, is this person going to walk? Is, how is their life going to be? Uh, and again, just, you know, you cannot imagine what a great place this is to work and to live. This is truly a family, all the way from our team. Uh, you know, they're uh, immediately on Monday, they're up signing cards, uh, you know, whatever they can do to send, you know, to send their love to Jesse. Um, you know, but I mean, the whole athletic department, all the teams here, the coaching staffs, uh, the, in, to the administration. I mean, uh, our team is acutely aware of what a great family this is. Um, 
like I said, I share an office suite with, with, uh, with George and his staff, and so uh, it, it really is a nice place to come to work. And, and so when, when life really matters, that's when you find out what, what people are really about. And I have no doubt that George and his staff are doing a phenomenal job taking care of Jesse, his family, and doing everything they can also to be there for his players. Uh, because when something happens to your family member, and you heard George use the word comrade, and we've got this mission. It really is. I mean, they're, they're, there's a piece of them right now that's hurting. And so, obviously, George has great responsibilities to Jesse and his family. He also has great responsibilities with his team. Um, and, the, and you guys asked some really good questions, I thought, about um, how, does that, how does that work? Because it's not easy from a coach's standpoint. I mean, it truly is a family. And when something happens to a family member of yours, um, it, really, it really does affect you on, on a lot of levels. Um, so anyway, so thank you all for, for your care for, um, for our athletes as people, not just as players. Um, and uh, so again, that, that means a lot.